Today we're going over HVAC contactors and these are used in the outdoor air conditioning and heat pump units to turn on and off the compressor and they're also found in air handlers to turn on and off electric strip heating. I'm going to go over the different types, how the switches differ, how the coils differ and I'm going to show you how to read the readings as well as troubleshooting. So they're not all going to look bad like this one is burnt out like this. Some are going to look okay uh, but they actually are on their way out. So I want to show how to safely troubleshoot these using a multimeter. Now we're looking in an electrical cabinet of an outdoor air conditioning system. And so we have no power right now, just, just to show you, we have the power off. So we got no power there and no power there. We have our disconnect pulled at the outdoor disconnect. So anyway, I just want to show you what's going on right here. So we have our power wires right here. So we have two 120 volt hot wires, and so that's 240 volts here. And then we have our ground wire. We have 24 volt uh, communication lines. Basically, it's your 24 volt signal wires that are going to the sides of the contactor. When this contactor receives 24 volts on the side, it's going to suck down this set of contacts right here, and it's going to close the electrical connection between this terminal and this terminal. When it does that, our 240 volts here will then be present over here. And then we're going to be able to supply 240 volts to the compressor and 240 volts to the outdoor condenser fan. And so then it's going to be running. When we lose our 24 volt uh, power right here, our contact is going to open back up again to its normally open state. And this switch is going to be open and the compressor and the outdoor fan motor will turn off. Here we have a single pole, single throw contactor. And what that means is that there's only one pole that's getting switched. And so this one right here is getting switched. So when this is not powered down here on the, on the coil, this is a 24 volt coil. Uh, when it's not powered and it's gonna be normally open across here, which means this tab right here and this tab are not going to be connected. When you do power it with 24 volts down here, it's going to suck this contactor down. It's gonna connect the switch. Now that differs from something like this, which is a fan relay. And on the fan relay, it actually has normally closed contacts and a set of normally open contacts. So that would be a single pole double throw. And you can see that contact right here on the inside. Now this right here is a double pole single throw. And so these are all normally open. All contactors are normally open. And so two poles are getting switched. So it's double pole, single throw. They're normally open. When you power the 24 volt coil down here, it's gonna suck down and it's gonna allow the circuit to be completed. Here we have a triple pole, single throw. And so once again, if you power your coil down here, it's going to suck down all three contactors and it's gonna allow all three circuits to be completed. So here we have 24 volt coils. And so this is what it looks like right here. This one has a cover over it, but this is the most common coil voltage there is, 24 VAC, that's voltage in alternating current. And then right here, coil 24 volt VAC. And so these are the most common. This one right here is a 120 volt coil. And so it says 120 V right here. And then you have this one right here, and that is a 208 slash 240 VAC. And so these are not as common, but you do want to be aware just when you're replacing a contactor because they could look like this and still have a 120 volt coil down here. So once again, these are mainly the ones used, these 24 volt coils. Next, we're gonna go over the ratings. And so you see VAC, FLA, LRA, and RES. Now it's typically gonna be a tag on the side of the contactor, but sometimes it's right on the front right here. As you can see, there's nothing on this contactor on this side or this side. Right here, you have the coil voltage for this coil on the bottom of the contactor. This is an electrical magnet. When you supply 24 volts between here and the tab on the other side, it's going to suck down these contacts. Now the contacts over here have a separate voltage rating. And so right here you can see 277, that's actually anywhere from say 240 to 277 volts of alternating current. And so you'd supply it with say 240 volts here. And when the contacts close, then you'll have 240 volts present here. And then you're supplying power to your compressor and the fan motor. Now these ratings right here are all have to do with current and amps. So same thing, right? Uh, amps is how you measure the current with a multimeter. And so full load amps means the max current that can be drawn across these contacts uh, by a motor. So such as a compressor and a fan motor or a combination of the two. 
Locked rotor amps is right when the motor starts up. So it could draw as much as, say, 199 amps when it's starting for that first, say, quarter second of runtime, and then it's going to even out to lower than 40. And then right here, res, that's the resistive load of something such as electric strip heating. So electric strip heating, the current is not going to fluctuate as much as a motor will. So that's why the FLA max current rating on the contactor is lower than the res, R-E-S, max current rating on the contactor. And so you just don't want to exceed a contactor's max current rating because that could cause a hazard and the contactor is just not built with a high enough of a capability to safely handle that much current across its contacts. So basically you just want to make sure that you're not exceeding these ratings. So really, if the outdoor unit rating plate had a, a max current of say 35, you could put this 40 FLA contactor in and you'd be good. And you're typically going to replace a two pole contactor with a two pole contactor and a single pole contactor with a single pole contactor. But this contactor should not be used on an outdoor unit with a higher max current rating of say 45 or 50 amps. And so this is a 25 FLA contactor and so if the current, the max current on the rating plate of the outdoor unit was say 20 or maybe even 25, you could put this contactor in, but you should not put this contactor into a unit with a higher max current rating on the outdoor unit rating plate, such as say 30 or 35 amps. So this one, you can see it says 240 N277. That's what it's typically going to say. Locked rotor amps, once again, 150, and then resistive load, 35. The resistive load is always going to be higher than the full load amps. This is the full amount of amps that you could support uh, with electric strip heating. Now we're going to get into our troubleshooting and not all contactors can just be visually inspected and know that they're bad like that one right there or this one that has burnt contacts. Sometimes they're going to look just like this and it's going to look like everything's fine. And the thing is we don't want to just be doing visual inspections and the other thing is we have covers on here. We need to be able to utilize our multimeter in order to test these. So we're first going to test a contactor that has a bad coil. So I'm going to show how to test that, and I'm going to show how to test if you have bad contacts, and I'm also going to show how to test if your contactor is on its way out and going bad. So here we have our 240 volt power wires, and so you can measure with a multimeter 240 volts, so 249. And so over here on our coil, we have 28 volts. But over here, we do not have any power. And so the issue is that this right here is, is not sucking down. And so if you have power in and you don't have power here, you may have a cover over this and not know. So really, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to troubleshoot this coil down at the bottom. So right now, we've got no power here. And so we would turn our power off to the, say, the outdoor unit. There we go. So we got no power here, no power there. And then what we would do is we would check the electrical resistance of this coil right here. So to do that, we would set our multimeter onto our omega sign, so that's electrical resistance. And then we're going to measure our coil. And so you can see that right now we have OL, which means open line. That's the same thing as if these uh, were just held in the air and not touching. If these touched like this, then you should have 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance. And so this coil down here is reading OL, so we know it's burnt apart and bad. And this one is a 30 FLA contactor. And so let's just move this out of the way for a sec. This coil right here is intact. And if we were to measure the electrical resistance across this one, we measure 16 ohms. And so what you could do is you could measure the electrical resistance of a good contactor that you have in the, in the truck in order to compare it. But you already know right off the get-go that if you have OL across here, that the coil is bad. And so this one actually got water damage on the bottom here. And that shorted out the coil. Here's another coil that is bad, but looks like it's good. It looks fine, and, the, and this one right here has a cover on it, and so you wouldn't even be able to tell anyway, and that's why we need to be able to utilize our multimeter for our testing. So with electrical resistance, we're measuring across from tab to tab across the coil, and you see that we're measuring OL. And so that coil is bad. It is opened up. Now here we have a contactor that does not have 24-volt power on the coil, but we do have 200 and 
249 volts present right here on this side of the contactor, but we don't have the 249 over here, and that's because this switch is open. Now let's go ahead and power this coil. And now we do have between 24 to 29 volts here, so we are closing this switch. So the electrical magnet sucking those contacts closed, and so this will be the same as what we had before, and now we have 249 volts present over here. There also should not be any voltage drop across here. So we shouldn't read really any. It should be 0.0, .0 volts because the same voltage that's present here is now present here because this is a closed switch. So that's how it's supposed to work. Now here we have a contactor that's powered with 24 volts and so it's anywhere between say 24 to 29 volts. We have 27 volts. So that's powering the electromagnetic solenoid coil in order to pull down the contacts and right here at the inlet we have 249 volts. Now we want to check the voltage on the other side of the contacts since they are closed. You see that we have a varying amount of voltage right now? That's because the contacts are extremely pinted and burnt. And so imagine if you were drawing a high current load over here on this side, those contacts are going to heat up and basically you're going to end up with either contacts that are fully melted together or that are so melted and, and burnt that they're going to be pitted and no longer making contact. It's also a possible hazard here too because it could potentially start a fire and so in this case you want to replace this contactor. If you want to try to measure the voltage on the load side of the contactor when say a compressor is running, the best thing to do is to just turn the power off to the system. You can use alligator clips and put those onto the ends of your, your probes and connect them onto the terminals. Then you can turn the power back on and you can safely measure the voltage without having to be near any of the danger of the high current loads. Now when we measure across here, we should have no voltage drop. You see we have a, almost a 7 volt of a drop across here, and that's due to the high electrical resistance of burnt contacts. It should look just like this. So very close to zero voltage drop across there. Now I turned the power off over here. We could also check this with electrical resistance. And so since we have this side disconnected, we can check across here with electrical resistance. And that's even when we have this coil powered down here. So we're going to check from here to here. So we got four to five ohms of electrical resistance from point A to point B. That's no good. It should be 0.0, .0 just like this. Should be reading 0.0. .0 because these contacts should be closed. Now if we don't have power on the, on the coil right here, then we should be reading OL across these contacts over on this side, but we're not. We're reading a high electrical resistance value. And that's only going to get worse when you have current being drawn by a motor over on this side, and those contacts are going to be heating up. Now here we have a contactor that is powered with 24 to 29 volts, the lower coil, and we're going to check the electrical resistance across the contacts. Now it should be very close to 0.0, .0 just like this right here, so that's what it should look like. Here we have another contactor that has 24 volts on the coil, and if we were to check the electrical resistance across here, we don't have any. And so we're reading OL as if we are still open. Of course this back section right here is always connected, so we have 0.0, .0 ohms across there. And the reason for that is you may have either very, very pitted contacts where they're completely black and have carbon just dust all over them and they're not making good contact, or you could have something like a, a spider web down there or maybe ants that get attracted to the, the contactor. You could have any one of those types of things. And so in this case, you can see it's a spider web right here that was underneath of the contacts right in between here, and that stopped the contacts from touching and allowing power over to the compressor and the fan motor. So now that we have power back to the coil, let's check this again and read our electrical resistance. So actually we've got six ohms, so there must still be a little residue underneath of those contacts. The best thing to do is to just replace a contactor where you've pulled out maybe a, a spider egg or something like that. 
because that could be burnt to the face of those contacts. Don't try to sand contacts down or anything like that. So if you have a bad contactor on an outdoor air conditioning unit or a heat pump and you are gonna replace this, make sure to replace it with the same type. So in this case, it's a single pole, single throw contactor and you wanna replace it with the same FLA rating or higher than the existing one. If you were to try to replace this single pole contactor with a two pole contactor and it did have a crankcase heater, then you could put a jumper on this side of the two pole contactor to basically make it as if it's a single pole contactor like this one is right here. Then you don't have to change the wiring connections for where the, the wiring is connected to this contactor. You'd basically just put all the wiring in the same way and this will allow the crankcase heater to be powered properly. And remember on these outdoor units, one of the biggest things is to replace an existing contactor with one that is the same or higher FLA rating size. And if you want to learn more about electrical diagnosis, make sure to head over to our website at acservicetech.com to check out some of the articles and the quick tips we have and also the quizzes. Make sure to also check out some of the calculators and the podcasts and the videos and also our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book and also our new inverter mini split book. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.